A very good morning to you. Thank you for tuning in. This is Plus TV Africa's Off the Press. The program comes 8.30 every weekday. My name is Felicity Ezewike. Sincere apologies for coming just a little behind schedule. I have with me as guest this morning, uh, Bola Oba, Public Affairs Analyst. Pleasure to have your company this morning. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Okay, let's, let's start with the Nation newspaper. Uh, the screamer here is private hospitals to the rescue as virus cases rise. It has two riders. Government gives guidelines and CDC confirms 146 new cases. Just above, just above the big caption, you're looking at COVID-19, CBN cash for vaccine researchers, Police probe e-money lifestyle. That's another one that trended uh, yesterday. And then above the masthead, we have PNID, George O'Kay's request to access Jonathan Dezani's bank records, Borofi's others, reject O'Kay's speak, APC Unity Forum. You find uh, details split, that's the word there. Nigerian UAE returnee dies of coronavirus in isolation. And at the bottom of the paper, you will see Buhari settle for Gambari as Kiari's replacement. Announcement likely today, why he is the president's choice. And then uh, some update on the coronavirus situation on the nature of figures. Uh, 73 discharged in Sokoto, Gombe. 66 bed isolation centers for Kanu. 50 violators quarantined in Kaduna. Reps seek use of local drugs. Um, Mr. Oba, your thoughts. Which of these headlines do you want to pick on first? Uh, uh, the interesting one is the one about uh, the former president um, that states that court has granted uh, the account. Nigerian authority authorities the right to access his foreign account. And the gentleman is stating emphatically again in a, release, in a press release that was given from his office yesterday, he is stating emphatically that he has no foreign account. So uh, it will be very interesting to see how that goes. Okay, how, how about the case of the replacement for Kiari? But to be very honest with you, it is still very speculative. Uh, the, the, one of the spokespersons of the president yesterday said he was not aware of, um, of the news, uh, the, the news uh, itself. Uh, a number of reputable newspapers and news organizations have put it out tentatively today. I really want to wait for the confirmation before I start blowing grammar. <laughs> saliva and grammar, saliva and grammar are too expensive these days to be wasted on speculative, speculative matters. All right, um, I'll let you go on this. I hope we will have you on again so we get to hear your thoughts on that selection. Should there be a confirmation? Uh, let's go to the Punch newspaper now I'll, and I'll see. I'll be too glad. I'll be too glad to be. I'll be too glad to be on your privileged platform. All right, let's go to the Punch now to see what the headlines are. Nigerians picking face mask from dumb sides. PTF cries out. State private hospitals in Lagos get coronavirus accreditation. Panel deploys pathologists over Bochi Jigawa strained deaths. Six days after arrival, Dubai returnee dies of COVID-19 in Lagos. Um, one wonders if there were no tests before the evacuation or were they aware that this um, latest victim uh, had the virus. What's your take on this story? It was clearly stated that the deceased had underlying conditions, that he had comorbidities, and we all know from how this virulent virus has been raging across the world, that those who have comorbidities or underlying conditions are more susceptible to not being only as to not being only symptomatic, to not being only symptomatic, but are likely.
to have crisis with, with the infection. So I'm sitting there now thinking that it is not much of a news item. God bless the soul of the deceased, and may God grant his family members the fortitude to bear his or her loss. But I'm sitting there thinking it shouldn't make the news because the person had underlying conditions. God bless his soul. Now, one, I guess it's coming on the news because there were concerns over further importation and that these people will be screened before they are brought back to the country. So if one person that just returned a week ago has the virus, it brings to question the credibility of the process that is said to have been carried out on those who wanted to come back into the country, doesn't it? Uh I want to be very careful in, in being a speculative analyst. I wouldn't know the procedure that preceded the, the, the aviation authorities of the country of departure allowing our citizens who were stranded in their jurisdiction to board the plane. I, wouldn't, I don't authoritatively have that information. Okay, but you can in speak the, on the one in the from the... Of, in the backdrop of that is the fact that these people are Nigerians, and at a point, they declared themselves to have been stranded in another, in another jurisdiction. And arrangements were made by the Nigerian authorities and the local authorities where they were to get Nigerians returned back. So whether that person was infected or not, just like the case of the 25 Lebanese, amongst the Lebanese who were... Who were, who were uh, taken out of Kano to Lebanon, 25 of them tested positive before they boarded, be before they were made or allowed to board the, the plane. But because they, because they are Lebanese, it was incumbent on the Nigerian authorities, indeed incumbent on the Lebanese authorities to make sure that their citizens return to their jurisdiction. You see the tricky nature of international politics. They couldn't stay permanently in a country where they where they don't they don't have permanent residency, and yet there have been agreements between their country and uh, and Nigeria to return there. Inevitably, they have to go back to their country, even they were even if they were to be positive. So I just gave you the example of the Lebanese that left Kano for Lebanon. Twenty-five were said to have tested positive even before they were. The I, the I think you, 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 you made a point there. Well, let's look at the PTF uh, committee's concern over the use of face masks. That's the big one under which but, we had the returnee story. Nigerians picking face masks from dumb sites. Your thoughts? My thoughts are that uh, poverty, poverty, material, emotional, spiritual and intellectual poverty always takes a very ugly picture i know that you that i'm talking to now wouldn't under any extenuating circumstances go pick face mask from from a, a dump site because you would know the inimical nature of what it, it, it could cost you but you know what? When you have average Nigerians that are ill-educated, indigent, indeed, intellectually, emotionally, and spiritually poor, they may, they may even see business opportunity in picking those face masks and thinking that if they were to wash it, they could resell them. My sister, reality is reality. We, can, we couldn't have subjected our citizens to the historical magnitude of misgovernance that Nigerians have been subjected to, and you not have pieces of news, as disturbing as they may be like that. That is the reality. And I, I, I'm not too shocked. All right, but before I know we... Before we... That before is something we move on from happen. the paper, uh, sorry to keep interrupting you. Uh, before we move on uh, to the next paper, there is this uh, headline I'd like to take your thoughts on, and that's the Constitution um, Amendment reps 
proposed independent candidacy. This is not new, but it seems uh, it's getting some real attention now. Uh, your quick thought on that before we move on to other papers. If that, if that provision could go through the rigmarole of the strenuous procedural machinery to change the constitution and be imputed in our constitution, I would be somebody who would, I will organize a party the day it becomes prima facie provision of our constitution. Because one of the reasons why, why one of the reasons why we are in a mess that we are in a mess, uh, one of the reasons why we are in the mess that we are in now is not because we don't have quality human beings to come into to come into public administration and add value to Nigerians, but many of the quality human beings are really, they are really disillusioned and somewhat distraught about functioning in the conventional political parties that we have now. So the day the, the, day the provision for independent candidature makes its way into our constitution. You must remember that I stated earlier on that it is going to be a tough, tenuous, stressful machinery to go to first build table that the National Assembly, the two chambers are green, go through to third, uh, to go through passage into third of the houses of assembly of the 36 states of the Federation and ultimately the presidential asset. But if it does, my sister, this analyst will be one that will be celebrating on that day. Because at least quality Nigerians, people with vision, people with administrative drive would know that they wouldn't have to be subjected to the, to the dirty politicking that we see in political parties now. They can just approach the electors or the electorate straight and say, yeah, I come. Tell me. All right. I certainly would want to be in that party when the time comes, if it comes. All right. We'll go to this day newspaper now. <laughs> we'll go to this day newspaper. Um, again, the issue of uh, Dambari is uh, back. Gambari, I beg your pardon, is back here. Um, the, this day, it's putting it this way. Seasoned diplomat Gambari becomes president's chief of staff. New presidential aid seeks dialogue, unity to tackle Nigeria's challenges. Emir of Ilori Hill's appointment. Oh, there's still seem, but the nation has um, another, uh, is it the nation now or the punch? Underneath the punch, uh, there is another one that says, uncertainty surrounds Gambari's reported appointment as Buhari's chief of staff. But I, I really want to take your thoughts. Um, it, it, let's say, for instance, that um, he is a candidate. Let's not say he is um, the candidate, but let's say he is a candidate. Do you think that he is a, a wise choice? You are asking me if, in my personal opinion, he is a wise choice, if should, he is yes. the should candidate he, uh, or... Yes, yes. To be very honest with you, I don't think he is a wise choice. I don't, I don't think it will be a wise choice. Uh, one is old, 75. The chief of staff is the alter ego of the president. We can't have a president that is this old and this, uh, we can't have a president that is this old and that is evidently, evidently not active and have a chief of staff, his alter ego, his engine room, is the lubricant for the machinery of his presidency. I have him very old too. Give it to Professor Gambari. He's a very erudite, very intelligent, well-exposed diplomat. But apart from all those good, good things about him too, erudition, exposure, 
uh, international savvy, uh, uh, diplomatic savvy, and all that. Apart from that, there are some bad antecedents about the gentleman. He was one of the most one of the most vociferous rationalists of the enormous abuses of human rights that Abacha visited on Nigerians. Indeed, the name of Professor Gambari will live in infamy for what he tried to do to rationalize the state murder of Kensarewiwa and the other Ogoni, Ogoni activists. So I'm sitting there now thinking on the side of age, on the side of a negative antecedent in the direction of human rights, uh, human rights practices on the side of his illiberality, which is inconsistent with democratic norms. And some of the pronouncements he has made before, is this the person that is suitable in a Nigeria where we have many other brilliant choices like him, and well-exposed people like him? My sister, if I were to be the person who will make the final decision, Professor Gambari is brilliant, is erudite, is diplomatically savvy, well exposed, but that position shouldn't be for him. All right, let's uh, look at um, another one. Buhari expresses excitement at this day's donation of COVID-19 treatment center. That's a, a good move uh, from uh, this day group, don't you think? We want to celebrate anybody who at this juncture in a national circumstance is magnanimous enough to dispose his or her resources for the betterment of the society and indeed to help less privileged other Nigerians. So uh, I also want to celebrate this day in conjunction with the partners that this, this day garnered to make that a reality because this day owns the property that is the marquee. This day owns it, but you would notice in the commemoration that this day and other companies that I don't actually want to mention, oh, they deserve to be mentioned because they were yeah, doing the good. Yeah, the CBN and like the CC, China CC, Civil um, Aviation, um, the Civil um, uh, CC, CC, other this thing, we, we have to celebrate them for being magnanimous enough to take from their, from their resources. Okay, let, let's move on to... People want to save to, to do good. All right, uh, we're, we're time constrained now, so just take a quick look at this day newspaper. Um, is, why... is your show, is your show, even if you tell me to go home now, I'm at home. <laughs> no, I don't want you to go yet. I want to take your thoughts quickly on this day, uh, business day, I beg your pardon, business day paper. It has this one that says, why investors prefer Egypt to Nigeria amid coronavirus pandemic. Uh, it also has uh, Buhari disappoint speculators, um, Bills Gambari's back here again. Uh, but we've talked about that extensively, so no, uh, we can't go forward. Inside COVID-19, CBN says, uh, working on grants, facilities to aid researchers produce a local vaccine. Um, I'm just going to ask you your quick thought on the look, uh, the search for a local vaccine uh, for the COVID-19 um, virus. We know that Madagascar has come up with theirs. Our federal government has asked for it to be imported. But generally speaking, um, what's your position? Better late than never. Better late than never. To be honest with you, I was disappointed that the federal government of Nigeria uh, did not have a very decisive, very, very assertive mechanism of encouraging our researchers and scientists and those who were making claims to have found therapeutic, about therapeutic cures for COVID-19 until, until our president was appointed as the coordinator for COVID-19 on the Western region of Africa, and the countries of West Africa started getting their supplies of the Madagascar COVID organic uh, 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 drug 
or a tonic, and Nigeria wanting to solidarize with other with other African countries had to take it, and that, that was when the, our president remembered to instruct the presidential task force that he set up to also let them look apart from apart from examining the the uh, the goodness of COVID organic tonic to be consumed by Nigerians that they should also look into the claims by other Nigerians. But you All know right. what? Better late than never. But that is not how to, that, that is not how a, a government with initiative, with creativity, and a government that has vision and drive should function. Thank you very much, um, Bola Oba, for your thoughts on the headlines this morning. It was truly, truly insightful. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity once again. My regards to Kaya Diakitemi. Uh, he will get it. I'm sure he's watching. And thank you, too, for watching the program. It's a wrap now. I hope you can uh, join us again tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m. for another look at the stories making the headlines. My name is Felicity Ezewike. Please be well.